that man was sobbing in my arms, absolutely terrified. We have had vomit, we've had folk faint, we've had folk fall down stairs. Can you walk towards me? It's coming. <gasps> Jared, I think you're a myself. What the heck? Did our night vision light just turn on on its own? Hi, Crypt Keepers. Thank you so much for tuning into Amy's Crypt. Tonight, Jared and I are in Scotland and we are checking out the Jedburgh Castle and Prison Museum. This place behind me, yes, it does kind of look like a castle, but it is a a prison that dates back to the 1800s so much darkness here so many stories and a lot of ghosts so stay tuned sitting in the small town of jedburgh right along the scottish border is a prison that at first glance appears more of a castle than an actual jail opened in 1823 the jedburgh castle jail was built in the image of a former castle which had once sat on the same land hundreds of years earlier that 12th century castle was eventually demolished by the scots in 1409 after a turbulent lifetime of battles between the english and the scottish after the castle had vanished the land it once sat upon would become known as gallows hill since it was to become a place of public execution, playing host to many hangings. So by the time the jail was opened, this land had erased in many dark times and had also been soaked in death. Yet more darkness was to follow, as it wouldn't take long before the terrible conditions of the prison would become a source of misery for so many more. Originally, this particular building was first broken soil in 1820 and it was built purely as a prison, indeed a reform prison. The idea being basically instead of the old dungeons where everybody was mixed in in filth and squalor it was going to be a new improved clean and through that you're going to be found god and become a good person never commit crime again it lasted doing that for around about 80 or so years then it went into disuse because the prisons up in edinburgh were newer bigger and it was a lot cheaper to send people up on the train than it was to actually keep them here in Edinburgh. i first became aware of this haunted prison after talking to fellow investigators who had felt off within the building and i even heard a story of one lady who was hospitalized by the spirits there. Following research also revealed that there had been much more activity within the aging stone fortress over the years, including sighting shadows and apparitions, feeling temperature drops, and the appearance of strange orbs of light. But I was to uncover many more ghostly tales by talking to the building's manager. I think they mostly see shadows which I think is understandable. I mean, I've spent nearly all my, my life, even as a child, in places that would be called old. And the creaks, the bangs, and things you can't explain, I'm perfectly willing to accept there's ghosts. Always have been. It's hard to explain this building, because at the end of the day, it's 200 year, just over 200 year old. It had 80 or so years of being used as a prison, with lots of people coming and going, lots of emotions. There'll be people died here, there was one or two hung, you know. There's a lot of energy in the building still to this day. I say, you'd have to sit here for 10 or 12 hours and just tell you stories as I remember them, to find out what this place is actually like and to be here. I mean, I've got members of staff that are terrified to be here when it's dark. My boss will not come in here when it's dark, end of story. You get small children that will not come into this building whatsoever. They won't even come to the courtyard. You get dogs occasionally, they'll sit and howl out and they won't, I mean, we don't allow dogs in obviously, but there's those that won't even come up the driveway from the outer wall, they won't come near the place, you know? And they always say dogs are very sensitive, so it's hard to say. Uh, we have had folk vomit, we've had folk faint, we've had folk fall downstairs, and 99% of the time, probably find most of these people it's because they've got themselves worked up and it's not actually scary things but when they do find the scary things they usually actually go very quiet every year there's like a company comes around to check our fire extinguishers and it's a father and son team that used to do it and the young lad i mean he was in his early 20s his son was sitting there fixing away at the machine and his dad came up tapped him on the shoulder and says two seconds dad finished off what he was doing turned around and there was nobody there he duly screamed by all accounts run out of the building and he won't even drive past it now he's that terrified. I don't actually see much, I hear it all. 
and above the old office um, there's a, a relatively new section where we did the science and that and we were one there one night where there was a ghost night going on and everybody was in this area here and you could see them on the CCTV and we're sitting there my partner and I and she was we heard footsteps and we thought oh somebody's upstairs we turned around to have a look and there's absolutely nobody on the camera but the footsteps are clearly heard and somebody else came in at that stage and they could hear them as well so it's not just me what we most often get is when I'm locking up and I do say good night to everybody in every block just in case uh, you often hear this sound like it's uh, two or three old men talking together that have you know, worked in the pits or the mills and got a really deep voice of the whiskey and the smoking and they mumble to each other and you think, oh God, I'm going to miss somebody when I'm locking up. And you go around, there's nobody there, of course. With such a fierce reputation, we were excited to see what was in store for us at the old Jedburgh Castle prison and we were not disappointed with all the activity we would capture that night. Whoa, this place is so cool. Oh, you couldn't hear that? It's just a oh. flagpole. <laughs> yeah, flag. I was like, what is going on? We are out front of the most magnificent building. This place is so stunning. It is not a castle though. I know it looks like one. It definitely looks like one, but this is a prison, a very brutal prison. It dates back to 1820s and oh my God, there's some eerie feelings in here for sure. We were here exploring during the day and even during the day, it's very dark in there. It's gonna be interesting to see what it's like going in now that it's sort of dark, right? <gasps> what the heck? The lights just went off. That's a sign that we need to stop now. <laughs> All right guys, I just hit record on Ghost Tube and I wanted to start it right here, out the front of the building. Obviously we want to show that to you guys because it's magnificent, but also the Hello. gates. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Someone already here. That was that. perfect timing. I know. We're just getting started. My name's Amy, this is Jared. Please follow us around tonight. But I wanted to show you guys these gates here. It's like full on fricking castle dungeon gates. And I don't know if there's activity out here, but I've been told that people get scared to just walk up this path towards this building. Animals like dogs, people walk in their pets that the dogs don't like to come up Alexander. here. Oh my gosh. Alexander? Alexander. Thank you so much. Alexander, my name's Amy, this is Jared. It's so weird that I'm like, it's like, hello, here's my name. And I'm telling Alexander our names. I don't know if you're a prisoner or a guard, maybe you worked here. Maybe you date back to the castle. I did not know this at the time, but upon researching the name Alexander in relation to Jedburgh Castle and prison, I did uncover an interesting legend dating back to the site's past as a castle, before the prison had even been built onto this land. In 1285, Alexander III, then King of Scotland, was married at Jedburgh Castle. Legend states that Alexander was visited by a ghost on this special day at the castle, who foretold his impending death. Although he did not die at the castle, four months later he would fall from his horse, perishing from the impact, with a disastrous ripple effect that flung Scotland into war with the English. Whilst I cannot say receiving the response of Alexander through Ghost Tube relates to this legend, it is interesting to ponder whether it could be significant, given that we visited in the hopes of coming face to face with a ghost, just as Alexander had hundreds of years before us. I feel like maybe the reason why people get scared walking up here is because bars, like prison bars, are always a bit scary. But then you look through it and you just see this. Yeah, Why? it's intimidating. And that's the point, right? Yeah. Let's go into the first cell block. This is the Bridewell cells. Oh my God. How amazing is this place? I love it. It's like the most beautiful castle on the outside. And then when you go in, you realize it's a prison and it just changes your perspective on it all. So much darkness here. Bridewell. Welcome to Bridewell. Why do they call it the Bridewell? I have no idea. Does that mean something? This cell block was called the Bridewell and was run separately from the rest of the jail. This held like people that did petty crimes. Children. And chil it did hold Did it hold children? children? Right? Yeah. Men, women and children were imprisoned here. Oh my God. At the time, we did not know the origin of the name Bridewell, which is used to describe a prison or a form school for petty offenders, commonly used from the mid 16th century, named after St. Brideswell in London, near which such a building stood. To receive the word children, just as we were about to enter this building, is particularly chilling, given that many children were imprisoned there. If there are any children here, my name's Amy, this is Jared, and we're gonna step foot into the Bridewell cell block. 
I'm sorry that you were kept here, but maybe you want to talk to us tonight. We'll be your friend. That is so weird that it says that men, women and children were here. That's crazy. I did just want to say though, this is was for petty crimes, but conditions were actually really, really harsh because they believed if they made it really harsh, then people wouldn't reoffend. So yeah, it wouldn't have been pleasant in here. As soon as we walked in, I mean, you were closing the door, so it was very difficult to hear, but I thought I heard something like, and I know this is gonna sound out there, but like a baby crying. Uh. Could have been an animal, and that was a tap down here. If there's somebody in here, my name's Amy, this is Jared, and we would love for you to make another noise again. Battery on your mic's flashing. Are you kidding me? Nope. I just put this on. Dead. I heard that. Something just moved down there. Dead. Dead. Okay, a few things. Batteries dying here is super common. Is there someone down here? Can you say something? Can I hear your voice? Must have been in the cell. You reckon it was back here? Despite having heard some strange noises in the Bridewell cell block already, we decided to leave the building in order to replace the batteries in my body mic, which had strangely drained right after entering the cell area. Immediately after doing this, we returned, hoping that the spirits had now gained enough energy to interact with us. All right guys, take two. Batteries all charged now, again. Let's try That's this again. really weird. So batteries drain, draining here is very common, but something I was told about this particular cell block uh, by Duncan, our guide, is that someone has sighted an apparition here and it has to do with these things above me, these grates in the ceiling. Most people claim the actual Bridewell block one is the most active. I did a radio show here about oh, six years ago, it was in late January, and it was not a pleasant evening in the hall. As you know, there's three main cell blocks here, and there was the radio crew and three of the radio show's guests. Two were girls that were believers, and there was a big block there. Oh, a good 6465. It's all rubbish, rubbish. Nah, no such thing. And the big lad was second into the cell block at the Bridewell at the far end. And there was a bit of a commotion, a bit of noise. I thought, oh God, what's happened? Is he falling over? Is he bumped into a door? And he came hurtling out that door. And basically, I got him into here where we are now, and sat him down. And then he couldn't sit for long. He got up and he had a cup of tea. His hands were going like this. I'm like, you're all right? He says, no, 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 I'm not all right. He says, I saw a ghost. I went, all right, come on in, what is it? He was upstairs, and in the upstairs floor, there's two grates to allow ventilation. But you can obviously see through them. And he is absolutely convinced that he looked down there and saw somebody in a frock coat walking along. But that man was sobbing in my arms like that. He was, his head was on my head, and he was absolutely terrified. Right, and he became a believer. He won't admit to it, but he was absolutely sobbing. He was so scared because he convinced he saw that ghost. Now, guys, Ben and me are in Scotland and we did head to Edinburgh. I wanted to point this out. This is called a Mort Safe. So yes, you'll see a coffin down here and then it's got this cage around it and basically Edinburgh became the top spot in the UK for anatomy science and essentially dead bodies were getting dug up and sold off to the anatomy school. Even people were getting murdered so their bodies could be sold for, to the anatomy school for like 10 bucks each or whatever it was. And these mort safes were used to protect the bodies because they're a valuable asset back then, as gross as that is. So is this one real? I mean, that's definitely real. Like this is definitely real. But like, is the coffin real? It looks it. It looks legit to me. Yeah. 
So this is where we were when batteries were draining and we were hearing noises in that cell behind you. It literally just sounded like something being dragged or someone moving. What are you sniffing in there? It just, it smells dirty, like, and it could just be the building. It's obviously an old building, but doesn't it smell? Dirty socks or something. I can't smell anything. <laughs> Why do you look like a dog sniffing that? These are the staircases we are contending with, guys. Oh, they're... Very steep. Yeah, danger, danger. What, did Ghost just say danger? No, I'm saying danger, because they're dangerous. It is beeping though, because of these. There's a, <gasps> what? I just heard something. There's is there a bird? A bird up there. I so can't look. Get up, go, no, go, go. No, I can't look. Can't look where, just go. Where is it? There's a bird just. I can't look at it. It's nesting up there, it's not where? moving. Directly above me, moving that door. Go. <sighs> Just a big pigeon. Just. Okay, so there's a pigeon in that. I thought stairwell. I just heard a voice. Was it the pigeon? Pigeons can't talk. It can make a noise though. Okay. You heard that? I did. I actually just thought I heard a child giggle then or something. Could have been a bird, but it sounds like a giggling child. There, well, there were. There was um. Okay, I think that is a bird. But I, I know what you're talking about. There was another noise. If there are kids here, I swear they would be laughing at me. Because <laughs> if I send someone like that over a pigeon, I'd be like, a dingbat oh. with a bird phobia? <laughs> Don't call me a dingbat. But here's that grate from upstairs. So imagine just seeing someone walk down there. What the heck? Yeah, so you can literally just see the floor below here. So if you send someone walking down there, I guess that'd be pretty creepy. Is there anyone up here tonight? Who the fuck? What? <laughs> oh. I just can you not do that to me, please? <laughs> I'm gonna call you Alexander. Can you move the door? Can you say something? Can you show yourself? Make a noise for us? Heard that. Tap in that corner. Thank you so much. I'm gonna walk towards the noise. Maybe it's the flagpole. Don't want to alarm you. What? There is a nest there, but I don't no. think there's birds in it. Why? There's a nest there, but there's no birds in it, so Why? I think you're good. Why did you even tell me that? I would never have seen that. Why would you tell me that? Okay, we'll be coming back tonight, but if you can do something to show us that you want us to come back now, we would appreciate that. Keep moving? Yep. Uh, let's head through. We're walking through the middle section of the building. This was actually the jailer's house for a, a time and um, it's run as a museum today so there's a lot of artifacts in here. The area of interest though is on the other side, another cell block. <laughs> I thought there was someone standing there but it was my own reflection. So right now we're entering the debtor's prison. This is also where the women were kept too. So on the right hand side were cells for the women, and on the left hand side, the people that were in debt. So built in the 1820s, shut in the 1880s. If we look on the floor though, you can kind of see how this place has been changed, morphed and renovated over the years. There's this massive line down the middle of the corridor here. And basically, there was a noise right near me then. And there's a... Every cell I look in, there's a mannequin. Corridor <laughs> here. And basically... Corridor here. And basically... Basically what I was gonna say though, there was originally a big wall in the middle here. And that was to separate the women who were on this side. Help. Help. And then the people in the debtor's prison on this side. And there is another mannequin there, yeah? Yeah, there is, oh my God. I would love to help you. So my name is Amy and this here is Jared. And I don't know if you can hear my voice, but if you can, I would love to know who you are. If you can share your name with me, that would be amazing. If you just come up to these lights in my hand, maybe you can do so. 
I don't know why you are in here, but I'm not going to judge you. Maybe I can do something to help you though. Maybe if you just tell me your name, then maybe I can help. Put her male voices in too. Men would be on the other side, Jared. Can you tell us what cell you're in? Grandson. Oh, fuck. Oh, scared the shit out of me. Grandson. The grandson. Are you looking for your grandson? Are you somebody's grandson? I thought I heard a kid then, but... I didn't hear that one. I'd say this way. And look, I'm telling you, a woman with a child. I swear I heard a child. This moment is pretty strange to me. I felt as though I had heard a child cry out, which Jared did not hear in the moment. Soon after this, we found an image depicting a woman holding a baby, as this was where female prisoners were kept. I also wonder if this moment could tie into the word grandson that we had just received through Ghost Tube. Yet the strangest thing about all of this is that the audio of what I had heard was actually documented in this moment, but only on the audio track of the camera I was holding in my hands. There is a lower level and another one of these staircases. There better be no bird in here, this one. Look at that though. What the heck? Base camp, base camp, base camp. I also got this tango drink. It's like black current. I don't know. It's a pool. <laughs> How do you keep getting that wrong? I get that wrong every time. Right, the male prisoner's cell block. I do want to show you guys something. Look at the size of this key. What? That's, it is <laughs> chunky. <laughs> that's not a novelty key. That is a legitimate key to unlock this door. That is the biggest darn key I've ever seen in my whole entire life. It's actually really heavy as well. <laughs> it's insane. Well, you need a big key for a big door hole. It's too big for me to handle. <laughs> Executed. <gasps> oh my god. Is that relevant? I'm guessing so. Yeah. So we know this place started its life as a castle. <gasps> when... What? Oh, shit. <gasps> hey kitties. What is it with freaking cats on this show? <laughs> <laughs> Executed. I'm sorry if that happened to you. But this place started its life as a castle that got demolished. Then this place became known as Gallows Hill because they were executing, they were hanging people up here. And then it became a prison. How do you feel? And they apparently did more executions here. I feel a little bit nervous going into this cell block. I will not lie to you. Should we be worried going in here? How do you feel about us coming in? Be careful. <gasps> oh my God. What? <laughs> oh, sorry. The cat just touched my leg. <laughs> How do you feel about us being in here? Be careful. This okay. is like, like as soon as we're asking questions. Um, I'm going in. Thank you for the warning. And I have been warned about this place. Can you make sure the kitty doesn't come in? And I will be careful, I promise. Not only is executed relevant to the past of this area, once being known as Gallows Hill, but the response of be careful also holds significance. I had heard that the men's area is not only one of the most haunted places in the jail, yet it is also a place which can be dangerous, with spirits physically injuring visitors in the past, and possibly why this area normally remains off limits to museum guests. So I do wonder if this was potentially a warning before we entered the building. Okay guys, this is what's known as the men's cell block. Pretty much they put the worst of the worst in here. It has a very different feeling to the rest of the prison. And some of my good friends, Alison and Kag from Adelaide's Haunted Horizons, they came here a few years ago. And I'm gonna link their video below for you guys to check out because they warned me about this place. They told me that they had- Invisible. Weird feelings in here, invisible. I would love to see you though. 
Or are we invisible? Maybe you can just hear my voice. Guardian. <gasps> Is the cat the, the cat guardian? Like our guardian? Should we let it in? Maybe the cat's here to look after me. I swear those <laughs> little black kitties follow me around being my little guardians. Kitty cat! I love. Um, I'm sorry, kitty. I'm going to walk away. Oh, I feel so bad. Just a note on the cat here, he is a no neighbourhood stray and though he was friendly enough with us, he has allegedly bitten people pretty badly before. He isn't allowed into the buildings here as they are run as a museum, but we especially did not want him to follow us in here as it is not typically open for tours so it's more for his own safety. Whether he was our guardian or not I cannot say, but it did remind me of our visit to the Villisca Axe murder house when we were interrupted by a cat shortly before activity kicked off in the craziest way. Up here guys, up this staircase. Once you go up there, the atmosphere here changes. Doors have been slammed here. They've moved on their own. And that has been witnessed by like multiple people. But I was also told a story and I don't know where in the prison this was. I believe it was upstairs. A lady had her hand slammed in a door. Like her hand was resting on the wall. Something that no one could see slammed the door and it crushed her hand and broke it. Something invisible. Invisible, yes. I just want to let you know that Jared because like just don't get your hand slammed in a door or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> Please. Or your head. Don't put your head in a door. These hands are staying here. Guard. <laughs> guard. Um, guard like... We got guard and then guardian. But could guard be like prison guard? Yeah, it could. Are you a prison guard? I'm going to go up the stairs because this has been, a, the second we walked in here, this has been very weird. Now, I do want to say one more thing before I go up. We did a walkthrough earlier today once we got here just to orient ourselves with the place. And I didn't say anything at the time. When we walked up this staircase, I got a massive pain. And it was like in my neck, the back of my neck on just one side and shot down my back. And it was there the entire time I walked up the stairs and then for maybe like 30 seconds once I was upstairs and then it dissipated and went away. We did do a Patreon YouTube member only video upstairs after that as well and I felt fine. So let's go up now because this is starting to feel weird. I do feel a little anxious right now. Hello? I thought I heard something then. Same. To me, it sounded like. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, legit. Same. Maybe it could have been a distant horn or could have been like metal door on a hinge, like Ooh. swing it open, you know, something like that. Yeah. The doors haven't been known to move, especially cell 18. They're all like rusty old big doors too. So these end two cells here guys, this one and 18, these were believed to be condemned cells. And this door apparently moved on the TV show Most Haunted. And I know that some people are sometimes skeptical. I just, okay. I just copped a whiff of poo. I can smell that too. Yeah. No, not here. I can't smell it now. No, I, I smell that too. Maybe it's a phantom smell. We, another prison, Jared and I investigated, we were smelling what smelled like shit. And um, <laughs> we said maybe it's a residual poo, but Maybe, like, this place, poor sanitation, cramped conditions, that's probably what it smelled like, right, back then? I'm sure it did not smell pleasant. How do we always come back to residual poos on this channel too? I swear there's always potty humour and toilets or something in all the places we visit. Well, I don't mean to. I just go with the flow. Whatever happens, happens. I guess if you smell shit, you smell shit. <laughs> all right, now we're in, and I have a good shot of the door. Are you able to slam it? Anyway, what I was going to say is I know people could be skeptical of a door slamming on a TV show, but there were other people witness to this that weren't part of the TV show, including someone who worked 
I think they still might work here at the the museum and they were standing outside had a good view of it and saw it happen and they were like no that was legit so I find that more interesting that it can be corroborated by other people. Well the film are most haunted um, there was two of the people who were like being in there had come out and the door had actually slammed and pushed one of them out at the very last one out and they swear blind they could hear a voice telling them leave leave now. I put it down to Holcomb, I'll be quite honest, it's TV. But I've heard it from two or three other people that have heard that as well. So it does make you wonder about that block. But for me, it's my favourite part of this building, as I said to you earlier. There's a fantastic atmosphere, but it's quiet. It's just, it's so different to every other part of this building. I cannot explain anything that happens in that building. Downstairs is just an old building. Upstairs, it's just... There's something special about that place. But some people get very, very excited about Block 2 because obviously it's shut to the public because of the condition of the place. Again, my name's Amy, this is Jared. Could you please make yourself known any way that you can? Maybe you can throw something, move a door. That's a pretty stiff door too. Pretty heavy. Yeah. I'd be pretty impressed if that moved. It's scary to think this could just like slam in my face right now. What cell are we in right now? Can you tell me? They're not going to tell you if you pull that face. <laughs> what cell are we in right now? Can you tell me? <laughs> oh, look at that. I'm pointing this out in the Patreon video. I reckon that's original graffiti because it's all like old time letters. Can you tell us what cell you'd like us to go to perhaps? Is there a cell we haven't visited yet that you want us to go to? Jeremy. Jeremy. Oh, I thought I was going to say your name then. <laughs> no, Jeremy. my name is Jared. Is your name Jeremy? Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Can you give us a number and we'll come towards you, Jeremy? Can you tap or knock on something? Just like that. It's just cold there. Mm. Down this end, it's very cold. Why is it cold down here? What were you trying to warn us about earlier? Why did you say danger? It's danger, right? No, it said be careful. Be careful. Why were you warning us? What were you warning us about? Who should be careful, me or Jared? Fight. Bite. Is that why we need to be careful? Oh my God. Is someone gonna get bitten? Who <laughs> would do such a thing? So weird, we're like, what are you trying to protect us from? Bite. Yeah, it's creepy. One of us is gonna get bitten. You know what? That is um, a challenge. You've got to bite one of us tonight then. Amy, bite Amy. Okay, you can bite me. <laughs> oh God. If I get a bite mark on me somewhere, I'm going to be very intrigued at that. Sounds Stop creepy, doing it? that, yeah, it does. Imagine if you're in the cell and you're in tonight and you're here. Kitties, you waited for me. Are you able to shut the door? Above. Above. Above? It's our second floor. Oh, poor little thing. Now having completed our walkthrough, Jared and I returned to the Bridewell cell block to reach out. Since I had felt like there were some children around in this area, we rigged up a Ghost Tube SLS camera to monitor the ground floor where a figure had been seen in the past, along with a number of cat balls and a REM pod. But as soon as we did so, three different cat balls began to light up, which we were lucky enough to capture on camera. Since I've been standing here. Look, Jared! All three of them have gone off, oh my god. I'm recording too, I'm recording. What the heck? Like literally, as soon as I come out, they're all going off. After this, we went back upstairs to reach out using Ghost Tube Vox, yet captured a strange noise that sounded like something being dragged across the floor right near us. And this was just as we were setting up. You probably need night vision. 
Okay, night vision is on. Uh, what was that? I have no idea. Something dragging? That was like, as soon as you went lights out, were you still recording? Yeah, I was. Okay, good, because as soon as you like cut and you turn the lights off, it was like a huge crash. It's on. It's on. So I just hit record on goes to box. If there is anybody up here with Jared and I, again, my name's Amy. I would love to talk to you. If you come close to these lights in my hands, maybe that can help you to share your voice with us. Please don't be scared of it. We, we're just here to talk and we're very friendly people. Kids laughing. Stand up. That actually sounded like a Scottish accent saying stand up. Or like stand there. We're standing in the middle of the hall of the cell block. Is there somewhere you, you would prefer us to go? Perhaps a cell number you want us to go to? At the end of the... I just said at the end of the... Oh, and I just asked, is there a cell you want us to go to? This one? This is the end, because the other one is the stairs. Or it, or it could be back down there. Ooh, well, we're down the end here. Maybe we're just going this one. Shall we, we go in here? And. Go ahead. Oh my god, I don't want to go in there now. I can't see anything. Sorry guys, remember we're in pitch black here. Was this the correct cell? When I first walked in here, one of my batteries or um, one of my energy sources drained. I, I don't mind if you take energy from us or these devices, these strange looking things that we have, but can you do something for us? Could you move something or show yourself, please? Yes. Yes. I heard that very clear. If you come out into the, the hallway, upstairs or downstairs, we should be able to see you. What do you think of us? Can you tell us about how you came to be here? That wasn't arrested. What were you arrested for? Need to get. Need to get. What do you need to get? That is not. This both. Maybe we can. No, no, no. Maybe we can help you get something. What do you need? How long were you in here? That sounded like a door locking or unlocking, like right, a thick prison door. And it's weird because we've had sounds on this before that aren't words, that aren't people talking. Like we've had that clock chime like clock. when we're at that, that cottage. And we had a train noise. Train noises, noises when we are in that, that train tunnel. So that's really cool. It sounded like a door unlocking. It did. Are you coming to open the door? Maybe there's a guard around. I would like to know if you are English or Scottish. Kid. Did it just say kid? I thought it said kid. Would they have used the term kid back then? Are there children here? How old are you? <laughs> Just got shushed. I know, always, every time. Now, I don't know if there's anybody down there that can hear my voice, but if there is, please don't be scared to come out into the hallway. You can leave your cells right now. Can you hear me? Can you tell me what it was like being in here? You seeing me? You seeing me? 
I would love to see you. Or maybe it was like it's that he's seen me or something like it might be referring to that story. Right, because he saw he saw right someone this guy, great here. Yeah, he saw someone through there. Were you aware that you were showing yourself to somebody? Did you do that purposefully? Or was that accidental? Men, women, children, I know they were all kept here. Who am I talking with now though? This is him. This is him. Okay, this is him. I've got full body chills right now. Uh, this is him, okay. I really need to know who him, who he is. It's not Alexander, is it? Ewan? 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 <coughs> Can you tell me something about yourself? <coughs> That's me. Child crying or screaming or something. Yeah, it sounded like yeah, someone sort of crying or screaming, but also like a like another maybe residual noise that isn't a voice, like a door banging or. Can you tell tell us who was walking down on the lower levels when that um, when they were seen? Are you still there? Okay, Crypt Keepers, again, we have moved. We are sitting in a random cell. This just felt inviting to us for some reason, so we've come and sat in here. And it's only lucky number, cell number two. Number two, maybe why it felt inviting. <laughs> but we're literally on the other side of the prison, the debtor's side. Uh, this was also where women were kept. So we have set up a ghost of SLS out in the hallway, and we thought we would just come and perform an EVP in this cell. Another cool thing about this area of the prison, it is very sheltered and very, very quiet. I optimal conditions for an EVP yes. session. I could hear a needle drop in this cell. What the heck? Did our night vision light just turn on on its own? Or brighten on its own rather? Uh-huh. This, you seen that? Have it just went, it? yeah. That was weird. I don't know what happened then. Was it on? Well, it's definitely on now. It I, thought it was on a, on. I thought it was on a low setting because we've got another one up here. We didn't need it to be yeah. too bright. Now What's, it's too bright. That's really weird. So when we film in night vision, guys, we have literally like um, an infrared light booster. That, that light is sort of invisible to our eyes, but the night vision, the infrared camera can see it because it's infrared light. To turn these lights up and down, there's a dial that you need to physically turn on them. That's really but weird. that just like all of a sudden. Poof. Well, they would have saw it. I can see just it on the viewfinder. Light. Yeah, like it just flooded us with light all of a second. All of a sudden, that was weird. Looks like we picked a good cell then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my name is Amy and I'm sitting here in this cell with Jared. If there is somebody here and you just played with our light, are you able to tell us your name, please? Can you tell us what cell number you normally hang around in, where you sit in? If you tell me how much debt you are in, I will pay it for you. Can you tell us what you did to pass time while you were here? I'm from Adelaide. Where are you from? I thought I heard something tap on the camera then. Just tagging that and I might cut too. What is really interesting here is as I heard a tap come from the camera, the infrared light once again adjusted brightness at the exact same time. This is not something I noticed in the moment as the light didn't adjust as dramatically as it did before, but paired with the sound really makes me think someone was interested with and playing around with our equipment. Okay, so my name is Amy and I'm sitting here in this cell with Jared. If there is somebody here, 
and you just played with our light, are you able to tell us your name, please? If you tell me how much debt you are in, I will pay it for you. I can hear men talking there. Can you hear that? No. Do you hear it? Super faint. That's weird because Duncan says that he's heard voices before. That's one of the things that people report yeah. hearing voices, male voices Men particularly. Talking. Yeah. I'm from Adelaide. Where are you from? I thought I heard something tap on the camera then. Just taps it. Yeah. Can you hear the camera tap? So they've touched our lights and our cameras. I, I mean... I definitely was hearing like a subtle muffled male chatter at one point there. It's super faint though, so I don't know how it's going to go on the audio with the video. But that tap on that camera and the light... Yeah. <laughs> this is super weird. And it might just be they're just curious about this stuff. Despite having some very interesting moments in this cell of the debtor's prison, we did want to spend some more time in the men's cell block, perhaps the scariest part of the Jedbra prison. And so we moved over to this area to perform an ST session in the infamous cell 18. This saw myself wear a blindfold and noise cancelling headphones while listening to a spirit box and relaying anything I heard come through, while Jared asked questions which I was unable to hear. Just heard someone laughing. Ooh. Hello, someone here? Who am I? Who's here with me? I've got the keys here to get you out. I'm just going to hang them up here. Just us. Just two. You can come up and grab these keys and you can get out. Five. Five. Five of you Just here. us. Five of us. All right. Can you give me a name? Grab these keys. You can uh, let yourself out. Laughter again. Like maybe me asking them to grab the keys is a bit patronizing. Or they find it funny, I don't know. Is it a joke to you? Can you tell me what's your favorite cell? Sweet. You think Amy's sweet? The girl. Okay, so it sounds like they're like Amy. How do you feel about Amy being in there with you? The skin. You like her skin? That's weird. This interaction is quite creepy, yet I did also want to circle back and replay a piece of audio that occurred right before these responses came through, as it does sound like there is a faint voice present in the hallway with Jared. Can you hear it? What are you in here for anyway? 14. Ooh, I was asking from before, cell 14. Do you want me to go to cell 14? Sean. Cell 14, Sean. Get. Is there a Sean in here? What if there's Sean graffiti on the wall? Let's go in. Her. Actually, interestingly, there's other seats in here, so other paranormal groups must be drawn to this room. Woman. Too. Still haven't grabbed those keys yet. I'm waiting. Can you tell me what, what they used to me. do? What did they used to do to you here? How did they used to treat you? Did you like it here? Our friends didn't like it up here. Why is that? What is that? This is a camera I'm holding. How come our friends didn't like being in here? Why did you make them feel that way? Tim. Why are people drawn to this cell? What's special about this cell? There's room. It doesn't look any bigger than the other cells. 
It looks the same as the others. Why is this one special? Men. Well, yeah, this is the men's prison. This is where they kept the men, right? Oh, cool. No. A potty. I swear. It's weird. Amy was saying she was smelling um, shit before. And we were just standing outside the cell, actually. In front of cell 18. Looks People. Can you do something to me to convince me that you're here? Please. Can you move something, rattle something, make a tap? Because? Touch her, make her do something. <laughs> what was that for? Hmm. Mama. I don't think there was children he kept here, but we were hearing or getting childlike words earlier. Betty. Betty? Doesn't sound relevant. Is there a woman here now? I feel like that was in an accent Four. too. Not a Scottish accent, but English accent. Can you walk towards me? It's coming. <gasps> Shit. <clears throat> That's really spot on. What's coming? Who's Jared. coming? Jared. Shit, I didn't hear what she said then. Did you just say my name? Who's coming? We got a warning earlier. Why? Number four. Number four. I don't think there's a cell four up here, maybe downstairs. Why did we get don't a warning? Go. Another warning. Why? Why do you keep warning me? I'm getting really cold chills now. Guest. Why Amy? Don't want, why don't you want me to go? Or maybe it wasn't like, don't go down there. Maybe it was more like, don't leave, don't go. You want me to stay? Do you want me to stay? I just want to see if this is cell four. I don't think so. Pull up. Well, there's no cell four up here and I'm not going to go downstairs. No. No, there's not, exactly. Cell 14? What did I find in the Rude. next- Rude. I'm not trying to be rude, sorry. Can you tell me what I found in cell- Men. In cell 20, what, what was the object I found in there? Tits out. Excuse me? Me or her? It's a bit dirty. I guess we're in a prison though. I don't know if they would have used language like that. Gentlemen. No, that's not very gentleman-like of you at all. In fact, that's quite disrespectful. Bishop? What is he doing? Well, I'm just standing here watching. I'm listening. I'm trying to talk to you. Woman. Well, she's listening to you and she's relaying to me what you're saying. <laughs> it's not funny. Turn. Turn. Why am I turning? What am I looking for? What am I looking at? <laughs> Are you there? What made that noise? Problem. What problem? <gasps> not funny. I'm not laughing, you're the one laughing. Would you? Would I what? Be? Mm-hmm, keep going. Dead. Sorry to break it to you, but I am very much alive. Wait. I'm waiting. Bishop. Bishop. They keep saying Bishop. There was a castle here though, maybe there used to be a church here. I know there's a graveyard next door. Fuck it. Excuse me? Did you just, what did you just say to me? You're talking to me? Jared. Oh, shit, 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 shit. Why, why are you saying that to me? Beef. I'm a vegetarian, I don't eat beef. 
his head. What about inside it? Inside it. What about it? G. What about what? Oh, that's a weird camera angle. I loved you. It's a bit weird. Surely you're not talking to me now. You've only just met me. But I do have that effect on people. Let's be honest. I'm getting all hot around my face and neck. Shit, I forgot the thermal camera. I should have brought that. What are you doing to her? Leave. Push it, push it. Can you push that door for me? Leave that door open for me, please. Try a little bit of reverse psychology. And don't touch those keys either. Don't touch the keys and don't close the door. It's important. It's very important that you don't touch the door and you don't touch the keys, I'm telling you. Feels, um, get him for her. Feels harder to breathe. What are you, mm. what are you doing to her? Suffer. Is that how you used no. to? Is that how you used to feel? Are you suffering, or did you suffer? Your he head won't bounce. Getting some really creepy, creepy dude responses on the. Turn on your message. right. My right. I'm turning. Again. Again. Okay. So cell nineteen. Is that where you want me to go? He's there. He's there. Oh my god. I'm gonna go in cell 19 then. Oh, I've got really cold chills going here. It's, it's inside. Okay, this is too freaky. I'm really, I've got cold chills. White. I'm going in cell 19, yeah? Just do it. Really weird. <coughs> Shit. Okay, I'm in here. Oh, it smells in here. Stop, get out. Like feet. You just told me to come in here. I'm really cold, I've got chills all over. Goosebumps. Turn a little more. I'm in here. It smells like feet in here. Why am I in here? Nah. Why am I in here? I'm... going back that way. That was really weird. It was almost like they were guiding me in here. It's, it's kind of a smellier cell. Her? Amy? It seemed like mad or like... Not don't want to use the word evil, but like a negative energy. She seems calm now though. Who's in cell 19 with me? Can you move something in here? Crazy for her. Who is? I kept getting like, I don't know if it was just cause my hands were are cold and holding like this or whatever but it kept feeling like they were moving and i don't know if it was little muscle spasms in my hands does that make sense yeah but like it could have been it felt like someone could have been moving this but at the same time i don't want to say that was what was happening because it could have been little you know like sometimes i've been working all day guys and then we come here and then i'm holding cameras and i also replied to a shit ton of <laughs> comments in the car today on our hour-long drives i was doing that the whole time so I feel like my hands could just be like spasming. Ugh. What? I just got high pitch ringing in my left ear. Get away that from the door. That always keeps then. happening. Get away from the door. Then. You were also, oh, that, you started to get really negative sounding and you directed me literally into a cell. You were like telling me exactly where to go, where to turn, 
It was so weird. That, that actually felt really weird. Like I was very relaxed though, to the point where I felt like I was gonna start drawling out my mouth and I had to sort of, a few times I was like. Well, I'm glad you did it. <laughs> oh, that was a bit, yeah, there was a lot coming through. Crypt Keepers, I hope that you've enjoyed this one because I have. <laughs> this place is amazing. It looks spectacular, but the history here is just so layered and so cool. Like starting with the castle that doesn't even exist anymore, sadly, but who knows? Maybe some of the entities that we were, you know, interacting with tonight could have spent back to the castle days, like way past the prison, you know? It's just amazing to think about stuff like that at these really, truly old sites that we've been investigating here in the UK and it's been a, a really good trip so far. So I hope that you guys have been loving it and enjoying it as well. Do you have any faves from over here in the UK? Please leave a comment below, let me know. But I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. That really, really helps us out. If you wanna learn more about the Jedbra castle and prison, then head to my website, amyscrypt.com. I'll write a blog over there. I also post bonus content on my Patreon and my YouTube members. They are linked below. And you can follow me on social media at amyscrypt on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. But thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time.